I went through this process so many times until I was like, you know what? I think I can get Raycast to help me with this. And I think a lot of people that go through this experience of going, man, I need to spend some time figuring out how to automate this thing, but I can't be bothered to figuring that out. So I'm just going to keep doing it manually. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But when you go, you know what, let me actually try. You may realize it's much easier than you think. And in return, it's going to make your life so much easier in the future. So I'm taking over as host today because a little bit over a year ago, Pedro did his first What's In My Raycast. Recently, a lot of people have been asking me how I use Raycast. So in this video, I wanted to do a little challenge with you and ask okay. you a few questions about your original video because I rewatched it this week and okay. I wanted to kind of test your knowledge on your Raycast usage. So what do you think you said in your first video that was your number one thing? Clipboard history. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You got it right. Okay. It's probably the same. And what workflow did you show? What workflow did I show for clipboard history? Um, did I copy a bunch of stuff and then like I went back and pasted that that sequence of things? No, you showed or... the uh, clean shot workflow where you copy an image and you annotate it. Yes, that's a daily workflow still. What folders did you have added to search screenshots? Now, for those of you who don't know, search screenshots, a really cool command that allows you to search the screenshots that you took, but you can add a bunch of folders to it that contain images. So that it also searches those folders apart from all of your screenshots. So what folders did you have added to that command? I had the clean shot folder where wherever the, the screenshots from clean shot go to, which I think is just under the root clean shot. And then I also added the downloads folder. Let me do the fact checking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's fact check this so, so I don't get demonetized. That was exactly that you had. No, no, no. Actually, okay, cool. You didn't have downloads. You had. Oh, I had desktop. Yes, you had desktop. Exactly. You had yeah. Desktop now I have desktop shot. and downloads. <laughs> All right. So in that episode, you sneak peeked a little too close to the sun, and. In consequence, people have been asking for the new floating notes. Floating notes when? So do you remember what features did you expose? I don't remember, but I do regret it. Like for We've the gotten last a lot of shit for 12 that. months, <laughs> I've been bombarded with messages about floating notes 2.0. Probably was some sort of formatting stuff, right? Like lists, formatting lists, or like uh, making the text bold or something like this. What was it? You leaked basically everything. <laughs> you were like, oh, wow. <laughs> but it's, it's coming soon. It's on the way yeah, out now. Now it's on the yeah, way out. Exactly. We promise it's actually true. And now the last one, the hardest one. What was the name of the candle that was burning in the background of your video? Oh, no idea. <laughs> I have to watch it. And even then I might not remember. <laughs> it was called um, sun dried linen. Oh, was it? Do you remember How where you bought that? it? Because I zoomed in and I read it. <laughs> <laughs> we usually ask guests, how do you use your Mac, right? But with you, that's right. since we, you know, you, ha you have already done the video one year ago, what I wanted to <laughs> highlight is the fact that you changed roles in Raycast. We have the hype team that's right. and we're working on making Raycast cool and making people know about it. So I'm assuming that you have at least some new workflows. So how have these new workflows and your new role changed how you use Raycast? I write all of our email newsletters now, which at the time I didn't used to. That was Thomas that was doing that. And so that's one thing I do once a month. And it's a little bit of a laborious task. There are parts of it that I didn't really enjoy and I can show you what I mean. And I made it easier with Raycast. For every newsletter, I create a page like this in Notion. This part is the part that I enjoy, right? This is the bit that's fun to write. I can let people know what's new in Raycast. We have this section here where there are some news about the company and everybody's favorite section, which is the team picks. I write all of this. And the, after this, I need to take this and I need to go over to this platform that we use 
And as you can see, I have to convert all of that to this kind of, um, you know, pseudo HTML. So this step that goes from Notion to this kind of opinionated sub superset of HTML is the bit that's a little bit annoying. So one day I was like, you know what, man, there has to be a better way. Like this is taking me too much time. So here's what I did. I created a preset. If I go search AI presets and I have this one here called email newsletter, right? And if you look at the system instructions, it just basically says, I'm going to give you some, some text from Notion and I want you to convert to our HTML code, which I will provide below as references. So then I took some of the code from our previous emails. I took like three of them and I just dumped them here. Then I end that and I just say, based on that, convert the email as best as you can. I think when I was creating this, I had little hope that it was gonna work. You were like convert giving it this the, email the extra little bit can. of motivation. <laughs> exactly. And so what I do now is amazing because all I have to do is I go here, I basically select everything, right? Let me select all of this. And then I open up Raycast, newsletter, right? Email newsletter, convert Notion to parcel. And when I do that, it opens up a new chat that has all of this kind of uh, context, uh, the system instruction rather, it's all set up. So from here, all I have to do is go select a text and it gives me the HTML that I need. And I've been using this for like four months now, three or four months, and man, Life changer. That's crazy. And and you know how this whole thing started? It didn't start, like this is the thing, right? I spent so much time trying to communicate to people that the secret of getting good at Raycast or getting good at like automating your workflows is to start little by little. Mm -hmm. You don't often have these amazing ideas and in two minutes you set them up and it's done, right? You have to invest a little bit of time and you have to be willing to work on it. At first, what was frustrating for me was to like convert these URLs from here to parcel. So I started off by just selecting some text, like I select this um, Notion paragraph and then I had an AI command, right? And the AI command was this one, mm. newsletter, convert markdown to HTML. Because at this point, this is just markdown, right? And if I do that there, then you see oh, I get nice. that text. And most importantly, I get this. Nice. You know, that's what I was trying to automate. So it started off like that. Then I built on top of it. Did I mention how I compressed images or not? In the last video? Yeah. No, you didn't. This is another daily workflow. In the previous video, I mentioned that I was able to open my downloads folder with a option D hotkey, right? Which was a quick link. Now I can still do option D, but instead of it being a quick link, now I'm relying on this extension called uh, download manager. And this extension gives you four commands, right? Manage downloads, open latest download, show latest download, which is the one I have option D assigned to, and copy latest download. So like when I do option D, you see how news is selected. Often I have a lot of images like this, right? Like Raycast related images. I'm usually using these images to tweet about them, to add them to the newsletter, or marketing assets that we wanna use uh, on our websites. So whenever I download these images from Figma or from Slack, the Inga send them to me, the first thing I normally wanna do is compress them because they're usually uncompressed. <laughs> because Inga does something that her images are always like 50 megabytes for some reason. <laughs> exactly, so I'm gonna show you like a real example here. I'm gonna go to our releases channel and I'm just gonna find an image that Inga sent. Let's see. There you go. So I download it, right? That's that's exactly what I do. I download and then I go option D. Now that image is selected already. I can just press mm -hmm. space and you can see that that image is 2.7 megabytes, right? So then the next thing I do is I just open Raycast and I type in compress, right? I close Raycast. I let it 
and let it do its thing. And you'll see how in a couple of seconds, that command will finish. You get a toast here. And that image went from 1.7 megabytes to 257 kilobytes. Nice. Right? Looks exactly the same. Do you configure it so it replaces the image? Yes. Oh, yeah, I need to it do that. It just replaces the image. Like what I love about this is that I've been doing this for so long and I must have done this so many times that like, it's so natural for me. So like the moment I download an asset, the first thing I want to do is I want to compress, I want to optimize it. So I just do it without thinking. And this command here, compress, compress images, is from this tiny PNG extension. It's absolutely amazing. The extensions that we mentioned, the third-party extensions, they're all going to be in the description below so they can install them and try them out as well. So what's your favorite native extension? I'm between clipboard history and window management. I feel like now I would say window management. I'm using it so much, especially with window layouts and custom, custom uh, commands. Which we didn't show because we did a whole video about window management the other day. So I'm going to link it here. So Tom is part of the hype team and he's always building some cool extensions that he posts about in his Twitter. What is your favorite extension by Tom? Linear. It's a very complex, there he is, Thomas Lombard. It's a complex extension, has over 21,000 installs. And now that I'm you know, doing a lot of project management, I'm using Linear way more than I was. What is one extension that you stopped using? Oh, I know. Q process. Really? I used Why? to use this a lot when I was coding a lot, you know, but now I'm not really coding that much. So I don't have to kill node as frequently as I needed to. Nice. What is an extension that you've been wanting to build, but you haven't gotten around to doing it? Whenever there's a new waveform podcast, we are always curious to know if MKBHD and the team are going to mention Raycast. We feel like it's super related to their content. So we have hope that at some point they will be curious enough to check it out and talk about Raycast. And I'm curious about what they think. I've been wanting to build this extension called Has Waveform Mentioned Raycast Yet? I started it. I think I might even have it here if I search for Waveform. Yeah, you see it's in progress and it's not running at the moment. It's not even linked. But it was the idea to search Waveform podcasts and then from here I could look into the summarize. So I started like some of the work into looking through all the episodes of Waveform. And then I wanted a command that would just go over the latest um, episode, get the transcript and search for any reference of Raycast. So, but I, need to, I haven't done it yet and I need to do it. I'm gonna do it unless someone else wants to do it. Do you have any extra tip they have been using? So just so we can close the video. You know how um, sometimes in Raycast, there's a little bit of drilling down into the commands, right? Mm -hmm. Like for example, search for GIFs. And then even sometimes from here, you can go into like view GIF details. Like you kind of go down mm -hmm. some levels. Normally what I'll do is I'll go scape, 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 scape so I can do something else in Raycast. I had to press escape four times, right? So now if I go search for GIFs, you know, poker face, uh, new details, I just do command escape. And command escape is a basically a shortcut that everybody has that takes you directly to the root. I think that's it. I think that's, uh, that's some of the new things I've been using Raycast for that it's not the, you know, the classic things. That's great. And I, I actually learned more than I expected today. You showed me some cool things. Glad to hear.